సుబోధయం స్వాగతం సుస్వాగతం ఐ వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ డే ట్వెల్వ్ క్లబ్ టు స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సిరీస్ ఫర్ టీచర్స్ లైవ్ ఇంటరాక్టివ్ వెబినార్స్ స్ట్రీమింగ్ ఆన్ యూట్యూబ్ అండ్ ఫేస్బుక్ ఫ్రమ్ ఎస్సిఆర్టి అఫిషియల్ లైవ్ ఛానల్స్ మరి చాలా సంతోషంగా ఉంది ఇవాళ మంచి మంచి రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్స్ మనతో ఉన్నారు లెట్ మీ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ దెమ్ మీతో ఉన్నది ఇస్మాయిల్ మరి మన ఈరోజు రిసోర్స్ చేయడానికి మనతో ఉన్నారు మిస్టర్ సుమన్ బండి గారు ఫ్రమ్ బెంగళూరు వెల్కమ్ యూ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ అండ్ విత్ అస్ మిస్టర్ విజయ్ ఎం విజయ్ భాస్కర్ గారు ప్రైమరీ స్కూల్ హెచ్ఎం ఎంపీపీఎస్ హెచ్డబ్ల్యూ గోనేగండ్ల కర్నూల్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ యూ సార్ అండ్ ఆల్సో విత్ అస్ మిస్టర్ ఏ మధుబాబు గారు స్కూల్ అసిస్టెంట్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఫ్రమ్ జెడ్పి హెచ్ఎస్ శ్రీకాకుళం కాశీబుగ్గ మరి ఆలస్యం చేయకుండా ఈ టాపిక్ ని మనం మొదలెట్టబోయే ముందు ఇంతకీ ఈ టాపిక్ ఏంటి ఈ రోజు టాపిక్ ఎలా సో ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేస్తాం so expressing abilities kaaval express cheyadaniki so the topic is expressing abilities and making request so welcome you all i request uh, uh, pokrishin was garu to introduce uh, suman bandi garu informally thank you yeah <clears throat> thank you smile uh, good morning andhra pradesh uh, uh, welcome you all uh, uh, to this uh, show uh, so we have here suman bandi a teacher trainer from uh, Regional Institute of English, Bangalore, and he also helped us in making up so many uh, um, modules in English uh, and also helped us uh, in bringing uh, capacity building among our teachers uh, in English. So, so we are happy to welcome and also welcome the team that he selected, Vijay Bhaskar Garu and Madhu. So, sir, with your team, we welcome you all to this uh, session. Thank you, sir. Please start. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for uh, introducing me. And... Uh, thanks for the support you have been giving all along this program it has been a great support so because of this support only we could uh, uh, do our sessions without uh, any technical difficulties i also welcome vijay baskar garu and madhu garu uh, for this uh, session who are uh, going to join me and support me in this sir so they'll join us in the second half so good morning viewers hope all of you are doing fine and i welcome to day 12 webinar 12 as a part of the spoken english uh, series hope you are enjoying the spoken english uh, sessions and also getting benefited out of these uh, sessions uh, let me share my screen now please give me a moment so dear teachers welcome to webinar 12 today's the expressing abilities and uh, making requests so these are two different language functions and we are going to talk about uh, both these functions in today's session in the last few sessions you have already been introduced to a few language functions you have already learned about a few language functions shobha ma'am in one of her last week sessions has uh, uh, introduced you to the concept of language functions where she discussed the importance of language functions and why we should learn them and how we should learn them and she also has introduced you to some basic uh, language functions so today we are going to talk about or focus mainly on these two language functions and for today's presentation i have with me vijay baskar garu hm mpps gonegandla and uh, mr madhu babu sa english jphs kasibuga so these uh, uh both these resource persons uh, are uh, srps from andhra pradesh so i'm happy to have them along with me they are going to join us in the second half of uh, this uh, session so what are we going to do today's uh, session what are we going to look at we are going to explore we are going to look at uh, various phrases and expressions which are used to express uh, these language functions that is expressing abilities inabilities and uh, requests so what are the expressions of phrases that we commonly use what are the informal expressions 
what are the formal expressions we are going to look at them we are going to try to understand their uh, meaning and how to use them in various uh, contexts uh, we are also going to look at some common mistakes that happen while using these language functions and towards the end we have as i said uh, 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 special sessions by these two srps where we are going to explore techniques of classroom presentation so not only should we learn about these language functions but also it's important that we are able so we learning these language functions is different from teaching these or presenting these in the classrooms to our primary children so there are many language functions which are very very basic which are also important uh, for our primary children because we use them on a daily basis so in the last the second half of the session we are going to look at uh, or explore techniques of how we can present these uh, in the classroom so this is also important for us as uh, primary teachers so first we look at uh, expressing abilities and inabilities so both are uh, related to each other and equally important so as all of us know this is one of the primary functions most basic functions that we use on a regular basis even from children's point of view children who are beginning to speak english uh, uh, may need to express uh, various abilities and inabilities of theirs so that way this is a very important and basic function so what does ability mean so ability refers to our capacity to do something right what we are able to do ante manam cheyagaliginatuvanti actions ni mana abilities ga cheppukochu so whatever we cannot do manam cheyalenatuvanti actions ni mana inabilities ga cheppukochu so that is what uh, uh, ability refers to so at home as individuals as neighbors as teachers in professional setups uh, informally or uh, formally we are required to express our abilities inabilities and also ask questions uh, to others about their abilities so that is why it is important that we talk about all these aspects uh, when we learn how to express ex abilities and inabilities so ability can be something that you learn naturally right for example uh, here we have ravi can run fast see running is something that you naturally develop though you can also get trained in running unless you want to be a professional runner right so running is ability that we naturally pick up as we grow so ability is something that can be learned naturally or it could be developed by conscious efforts like seema can speak english so learning a language or learning to drive learning to cook all these don't come naturally but we need to uh, put conscious efforts in order to develop uh, uh, these so let's look at uh, the basic and the most commonly used uh, phrases to express uh, uh, abilities so can is the most common and most basic uh, uh, verb that we use to express abilities so ram can run fast so ram can do this ram can cook ram can drive right this is how can can be used and it is the most frequently used and the most basic uh, verb so can basically uh, we call as we refer to as a modal auxiliary so modal verbs are verbs like can shall should would uh, which are normally used uh, to express uh, various language functions they have multiple functions so today we are going to uh, we are looking at can from ability expressing ability this perspective so can is the most important form and uh, next we also can use uh, Uh, able to able to is another form that we can use to express ability and in meaning both can and able to are uh, the same we can use them replaceably like she is able to do business you can also say she can do business so is able to am able to are able to able to is used along with is am are uh, while we talk about our present abilities so even when we use can ram can run fast i can do this she can cook so all these refer to the present uh, uh, 
uh, abilities your ability to do something in the present able to is able to are able to i am so as you know the subjects change uh, we change uh, is am are auxiliaries for example i am able to he she it is able to and the plural stake are we are able to and they are able to now look at the third form she has the ability to do business compare this with the second form she is able to do business do you think there is any difference in meaning between these two structures not really they both carry the same meaning so what has happened is we have used the noun form the second form she is able to so able is a, an adjective form right she is able to do this is the most common and basic way of using able to instead you can also change it into a noun form and say she has the ability to so this is just a different way of uh, expressing the same meaning uh, just that it is and uh, appears to be a little more formal that's it but while learning spoken english our objective is to learn first the informal and the basic and the short expressions uh, rather than more formal expressions so i would suggest uh, we commonly in our day to day usage we use able to rather than the noun form she has the ability to do so we are making the structure unnecessarily lengthy one of our objectives in our communication purposes is uh, not only be to be meaningful as we have discussed in the earlier sessions meaning is prime right after meaning you can say the correctness aspects like accuracy or grammatical aspects and one of the other aspects is also we should be able to communicate what we want to in as precisely as possible in as few words as possible so from that point of view she is able to do business right is always better because it expresses the meaning simply and in few words look at the next expression to earn easily so this is uh, this is uh, another way another phrase or expression where we can use uh, or express uh, ability so he knows how to earn easily so though all these forms uh, look same we replace we use them replaceably there's a slight difference in their uh, usage which we are going to come back uh, a little later so he knows how to earn easily he knows how to cook she knows how to drive this is how we can use these expression uh, knows how to this is also one of the common and basic forms that we can use to express ability next one nena is capable of winning the trophy so this sounds a little formal isn't it nena is capable of winning trophy so instead of saying nena can win the trophy you are saying nena is capable of winning the trophy so this expression uh, sounds a little more form saying uh, somebody can somebody is able to so in more formal situations when you are talking about somebody's ability you can choose to use this expression look at the next expression nena has the capability to win the trophy now is there again any difference between this and the previous expression nena is capable of winning nena has the capability to win the trophy again as i said capable is an adjective form and capability is a noun form so you are just changing the form and way of expression just to make it more formal that's it so both have the same meaning nena has the capability nena is capable and the last uh, expressions among the common forms is uh, manage to right manage to this expression can be used in different uh, time frames manage to manages to manage to in the past form managing as you can see so my mother manages to do all the work alone so as you can see here there's a slight difference uh, in the way we use used to uh, in the way we use it sorry so all these are the common expressions the most common expressions that uh, we can use in english to talk or uh, uh, express uh, abilities so let us understand uh, the nuances uh, uh, in terms of uh, usage the differences between these uh, phrases or expressions 
so as i said uh, i can speak uh, english right this is so all these expressions actually apply to me right i have written down my uh, ability so i can speak english i am an english teacher so naturally uh, english speaking should be comfortable to me i should have a minimum proficiency in english so i am quite comfortable in communicating in english so i can say i can speak english i can also say i am able to speak uh, uh, english only thing is able to slightly sounds uh, more formal though they can be used as replaceably so i can speak english i am able to speak uh, hindi i am also able to speak hindi so i am saying i am able to speak hindi hindi also i am quite uh, comfortable with so the only difference is uh, able to sounds a little more formal next i managed to speak in kannada to so kannada is not my mother tongue so i have been in bangalore for quite some time so i am comfortable in using kannada but not as comfortable as my mother tongue telugu or english or hindi so what i can say is i am not very comfortable i am not so proficient in kannada usage but i can manage so from this expression what do we understand when we are able to do something which we are comfortable right to an average level but not very comfortable or when we are talking about uh, ability to do something uh, to some extent not completely not confidently completely confidently or when something is usually difficult but you manage to do it so for me manage to uh, the right usage is i can use with kannada i manage to speak kannada uh, but when i say i can speak in kannada it could mean i am very comfortable i am completely comfortable in using kannada so a better expression would be i manage to speak kannada uh, and the last one i know how to prepare a cake so we already seen i know how to prepare a cake so how to stresses on the action right the process of doing something so normally we do not use this for uh, referring general abilities rather we use how to to mention a specific process because how to should always be followed by an action verb right prepare or uh, do something or cook something etc so we don't use uh, normally how to for things that most of us know or all of us no for example preparing a cake i can prepare a cake not everybody can prepare a cake most of the women because uh, they are housewives they know how to prepare they may know how to prepare a, a cake right so something special right in order to mention something special that you can do which normally people may not know that is where uh, we can say i know how to drive a car not everybody can drive so apart from Uh, the regular and most common abilities and inabilities uh, we use how to in order to mention or highlight something special that we know some special ability that we know look at this small dialogue let's look at this small dialogue in order to understand better the differences between these uh, 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 phrases so this dialogue is happening between padma and geeta both of them are friends so padma uh ask geeta how is your baby girl geeta and geeta responds uh, very good padma she can speak a few words she is able to stand on her own she walk a few steps geeta is actually referring all baby who is just beginning to learn uh, to speak so she can speak a few words right she is able to stand on her own so here able shows uh, some conscious application of efforts right small baby she is just learning to stand up on her own so she is able right able to stand on her own you can see the slight uh, uh, differences in the way these phrases have been used she even manages to walk a few steps so especially if the baby is very small uh, small babies cannot uh, cannot uh, uh, talk comfortably cannot walk comfortably so the baby ha have to put lot of conscious efforts so that is where we use uh, manages to or manage to something that we uh, manage to do 
not with complete ease uh, but by applying conscious effort somehow we managed to do it or finish the action next uh, talking about uh, responding to abilities right normally when we talk about or when we express abilities we don't just talk on our own right somebody has to initiate a conversation somebody has to ask us a question about uh, the abilities normally this is where we express or talk about abilities so when we respond right what are the common basic ways of responding to uh, abilities let's say uh, we have a classroom situation so a teacher is asking uh, uh, students who can solve this problem so who has the ability to solve this problem so either you know or you have the ability so you acknowledge or accept it so like ravi says teacher i can solve it so ravi feels that he has the ability to solve that problem so ravi says teacher i can solve it this is how you can respond or you don't have the ability you don't know how to do that problem where mohan says like mohan i cannot solve it teacher or sometimes uh, you either do not have the ability or you have but then you feel you do not have the ability but then you want to try so you can always respond by saying teacher i'm not sure but i can try so i can at least try though i do not have the ability to solve this problem but at least i can try this is one of the ways of responding next so we started our discussion by saying uh, can is the most basic and important form in order to express is uh, the function of uh, ability but is can always used to express abilities this is a very very important question can also has lot of uh, other multiple usages not only can when it comes to a language like english english is the language most multiple usages compared to any other a uh, language in the world right english is the language which has multiplicity of usages what do i mean by this uh, phrase multiple usages multiplicity in terms of usage so words phrases have don't just have one basic meaning they have lot of other meanings and for functions uh, uh, which they can perform and when it comes to this multiplicity of usage uh, uh, among all like all languages have this uh, Uh, feature or aspect but english especially has lot uh, of this uh, feature why why does english have this feature that is because the amount of usage right the more we use a language the more the language is exploited right so the more the multiplicity extends that is why english has lot of this uh, uh, multiple usages which means words and phrases in english have lot of multiple meanings similarly can also has lot of meanings other than abilities look at all these expressions and see whether the usage of can is the same in all the expressions just think for a while i want all of you to think for a while and see if can is being used here in the same way so as you can see david can speak four languages what does this function or ability uh, what does this refer to ability right david can speak david has the ability to speak four languages look at the second expression can i use your restroom so do you think you are really uh, asking about ability here no not really can i use your restroom is a simple question where you are asking for permission can i use your restroom right i need your permission so this is permission this is where can is used to express permission can you close the door please what about this expression this is also a question but uh, is it permission no you are actually asking the person to do something it's a request it is a request so this is how can can be used for performing a request you can get stamps in that shop so do you think this refers to ability here 
you can get stamps in that shop right so this is not even a person that is involved here shop you are talking about a shop so are you saying that the shop has the ability to sell uh, stamps not really so here can is being used to express possibility this is another language function all these are various language functions last one can i help you with the baggage so here though it seems like a question what are you actually doing here can i help you with the luggage you are asking a question but basically you are offering help this is also an important function so this is how model auxiliaries not only can all model auxiliaries have different functions so that is why we have to be aware of these multiple usages so this kind of information we can easily get from grammar books or dictionaries the most important and useful uh, tools to get such information is uh, a dictionary a good dictionary can help you avoid uh, these kind of confusions so it, uh, this is why we need to be very careful while using uh, model auxiliaries to perform different functions next uh, we have looked at various expressions to talk about expressing abilities now let's look at how we can express inabilities which is also equally important because not all of us have all the abilities in the world some of us have some maybe with respect to some things we do not have that ability so when it comes to expressing abilities we just add not right i can do this i cannot do this just add not in spoken english we use the contracted form can't most often i cannot instead we say i can't i won't if you talk about other model auxiliaries shouldn't wouldn't etc so we can't afford to buy this car next as you as we have discussed we can also say is able to are able to so when you use is able to are able to again just add not he is able to speak but not able to write this means he is not able to write this in short here also short forms can be used contracted forms can be used able to we aren't able to etc next she is capable she is not capable short form she isn't capable so just add adding not will do for expressing while expressing abilities now most of the expressions most of the examples so far have focused on expressing present abilities abilities also can uh, be related to the past which means you can have some abilities uh, in the past but maybe you don't have have now over time maybe you are not doing them or maybe because of your uh, uh, growing age factor you may lose the uh, ability right you may reduce your ability in certain aspects for example he was able to swim across the river right it is just a past action somebody's ability to do some action in the past so if it is able to we just say was or were depending on whether the subject is singular or plural so he was able we were able to finish the work in time you are just referring to a past action when it comes to could could is used as a past form of can when we talk about abilities so when we say i can he can narain can we are referring to present abilities whereas when we use the could form we are referring to the past so narain could run 10 kilometers at a stretch when he was young so maybe he is old now so now he can only run five age factor his ability has uh, diminished so he could run 10 kilometers but now he can only 5 kilometers so similarly when you want to talk about your uh, abilities in the past you can say when i was a child i could do this i could do that but now i cannot do this when i was in college i could do this when i was in college i could dance well when i was a child i could dance well but maybe now now maybe i can't next so apart from expressing abilities and inabilities it's also important uh, uh, to ask about others abilities which means basically questions framing questions uh, in order to know about others abilities 
so how can you frame these questions let's take a simple example statement you can speak hindi this is a statement about somebody's ability so when you want to convert this into a question when you want to frame ask a question all you have to do is uh, bring the model auxiliary or the auxiliary to the front so you can can you i can can i they can can they this is how you can frame a, a simple yes or no question and ask somebody can you speak hindi can you cook can you drive etc so this is how you can ask uh, somebody a simple yes or no question about their abilities next uh, the third and fourth if you see properly they are negative questions just like statements can be positive and negative questions also can be positive and negative can you speak hindi positive question can't you speak hindi is a negative question so when can we ask somebody a positive and a negative question both are questions both are for information right so can you speak hindi positive question when do we ask when we want information but can't you speak hindi is a confirmative question we ask such a negative questions for confirmation means when we know but we are not sure i thought you speak hindi can't you speak hindi right because i thought already so i am not sure i have a doubt that's when we can ask this kind of question you can also ask uh, wh questions right about uh, others abilities what can you do how many language can you speak so as you can see structure wise wh question always starts with a wh word followed by auxiliary so in this case we are talking about can so you can say what can how many languages can this is how we frame wh questions next common errors there are some common mistakes that uh, people you know knowingly or unknowingly commit while expressing abilities so the most common of these are i can able to sing dance so as we discussed can and able both are different verbs uh, forms that we use they have the same meaning so this is a common mistake that happens sir i can able to sing i can able to sing uh, dance i can able to do this uh, action so this should be avoided i can sing i can dance or i am able to sing i am able to dance similarly negative forms also this combination is used. i can't able to drive i can't drive or i am not able to drive that's it we could able to go we could able to win the cup no we could win the cup or we were able to win the cup we couldn't able again we could not reach or just say we were not able to reach reka has the capacity of winning the trophy this is a very common usage right most of us uh, uh, use this without thinking but capacity is usually used to, ref to refer to the physical capacity rather than ability so it's always better to say reka has the capability of winning the trophy rather than capacity right so with that we finished talking about uh, abilities expressing abilities and inabilities so we'll uh, quickly move on to the second part part 2 another important language function that is making and responding to request this is also one of the basic and important language functions so what are we doing when we are making a request basically we are asking the opposite person to do something right this is different from telling people to do something so when we tell people to do something we could give them instructions directions or commands in all these uh, functions we are asking them to do something while making a request also we are making we are asking them to do something but we are being more polite especially when we want some help from others we cannot just instruct them we cannot just direct them or command them right so these are used uh, depending on the relationship and the context so language plays a very very important role uh, if you want a positive response uh, when you are asking for a request so it's important also to know how to accept or decline a request so the most common forms that we can use for uh, expressing uh, or request or asking request these are the most common expressions can you could you can you can you do this could you do this 
will you do this would you do this so these are the most frequently used forms so meaning wise they are the same please note that in the previous function when we talked about could we said that could is the past form of can could is used to express past ability but here as you can see could is not the past form of can so we should be careful multiple usages so in this case could is equal to can would is equal to will they are just more formal versions could is more formal than can would is more formal than will so let's look quickly at uh, the list of expressions uh, while making requests uh, from less polite to more polite can and will these are the most common forms of expressing or asking a, a request can you help me will you help me both are same in meaning the, these expressions we use mostly in informal situations so if you want to be more polite just add please can you help me please you can also use please uh, after the auxiliary can you please help me right can you please help me will you please help me and if you want to make it even more formal so if the situation becomes more formal you want to be more polite that's where you can replace can and will by could and would could you help me would you help me so these are more formal than can and will and could is already formal in order to make it more polite you can add please could you help me please would you help me please so naturally when because these are more polite and formal the tone also changes can can be used with close friends and family members can you help me but when you are using could it means naturally you are being more polite so could you help me please so even the tone also adds to the function can i have some when you are asking somebody this one so this is definitely not a formal context this is an informal context can i have some water but even such expressions can be made more polite by changing the model auxiliary so this can be made more polite by saying may i have some water you can make it even more polite by adding please may i have some water please so let us look at some of the other expressions we have already looked at can could can you cook lunch today if you are talking about cooking lunch so definitely you are talking to your friends close friends or family members so can you cook lunch today you don't have to be very polite or formal but if you want to be you could use could you cook lunch today right could you please cook lunch today by adding please you are being very pleasing very appealing right you are being more uh, polite even with your closed ones right compared to these ex alternative expressions are these if you want to be more even more polite uh, do you mind cooking lunch today so as you can see the first three expressions are direct asking you are directly expressing your request but whereas the last two are you are being indirect by being indirect you are being very tactful and also being very polite do you mind cooking lunch today would you mind moving the site and also notice that when you use do you mind would you mind you notice that the verbs are not used in base form right so far all the expressions can you could you would you will you you have seen that the main verb was used in v1 base form but when you use do you mind would you mind you have to use an ing form right the ing form or the gerund form grammatically we call it so this is something to note next let us look at some context to understand where we can be direct where we can be indirect uh, right most of the times when we ask people to do something right we use imperatives but imperatives all the time we cannot use imperatives imperatives using directly can sound rude for example context 1 right we are talking about a middle aged uh, man or a boy in 25s or 30s where uh, an old man a neighbor keeps calling him boy 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 because he is older right but this boy he has turned over 20 or 25 years so he doesn't want to be called boy right so every time that old man calls him boy 
this boy or this man this fellow uh, he gets irritated so one day he decides to tell him so he can say don't call me boy this is a direct imperative right he is being very direct so in such situations uh, this kind of expressions can be uh, uh, here to be rude so instead of being uh, so directly using an imperative he can be a little more polite and he can make it into a request by saying please don't call me boy please don't call me boy by adding please and also by making his tone pleasing but even this uh, is better than don't call me a boy but uh, if you want to sound even more respectful and polite you could say in indirect request uh, i really wish you stop calling me boy so, so there are situations where uh, even if you are being direct in your request sometimes you may have to be better than that by being indirect by using such expressions i really wish you stop calling i really wish you stop doing this i really wish you don't call me so often when somebody is calling you very often by calling you many times next context 2 let us talk about a teacher and a, a student uh, setup in a classroom where a teacher identifies that her students are making some mistakes so the teacher can be direct and use an imperative by saying be careful hereafter nothing wrong with this expression but the teacher can be a little more pleasing by saying please be careful children hereafter so this is a direct request right and the teacher can be even more polite by saying let us be careful hereafter by including herself though there is no need mistakes are made by children the teacher is advising the children but still see how by using an expression like letters the teacher is involving herself so this is also an indirect way of expression where the teacher is being more democratic and more polite so we need to be aware of this kind of uh, functions that is why uh, teachers say let us start the lesson let us go forward word an important expression used by teachers to show this indicates that the teacher is being very polite and democratic next some other special requests right for example context 1 this seems to be a direct question what time is it you are asking somebody time right so you can make it more polite by adding please right this is not any language function you are just asking this question for information but you can make it more pleasing by uh, adding a word please you can also be more polite by saying could you tell me what time it is or you can just say excuse me can you tell me the time please by adding excuse me this is a you know another way to make an expression more polite next context 2 you are asking somebody right to give you permission to serve the food this is absolutely Uh, by the context you can know or can understand the form by form you can understand the context is a very very informal context so let me serve the food serving food you are talking about because maybe you are talking to your close friends or close family members so you can even there you can be more polite by saying let me serve the food please please let me serve the food right you are asking somebody to allow you to do something so even that can be made polite by adding just adding a please most of the time please is a word which can go with any and every expression including questions like this like you have just seen in context 1 next uh, written english some of the expressions uh, that uh, we use in written english most of these language functions we use uh, uh, in the spoken mode but when we use in the written english written context uh, we don't uh, Uh, ask it in the we don't keep the question format right we use them in the statement format or an imperative format look at the first one example let's say headmaster is talking to his uh, uh, teachers send me the list of students in an email id let's say sorry he is uh, typing an email uh, sending an email to the teacher the headmaster so he or she can say send me the list of students this is okay because the headmaster has the power or authority but uh, this is uh, neither rude uh, nor uh, very polite it is just a neutral expression the headmaster is still showing his authority there is no problem though there is no problem uh, right uh, any problem with the usage 
the headmaster or the person can be a little more polite by saying i request you to send the list of uh, students and you can also make it even more formal by saying we would be grateful if you can send us the list but looking at it from a headmaster point of view uh, do you think we can use the third expression not really the headmaster doesn't really have to be so formal with a teacher right if or he or she is talking or communicating with a teacher so who can use this it depends on the context for example uh, if you are coming if you are asking this uh, to an higher official let us say do or maybe you are communicating with the commissioner's office then you are a teacher then maybe you can use uh, such a very formal expression some more formal expressions uh, uh, quickly we look at so if you want, if you want to be very very formal these are some of the uh, commonly used uh, formal expression is there any chance you could do it i really appreciate if you could lend me some money do you think you could do this for me sorry to bother you and another phrase where you can add to any request uh, right by being more considerate you are being more considerate uh, by using this expression may i request you to do this may i request you to occupy the chair especially may i request you to can we have the pleasure of where do we come across especially in public functions seminars meetings where you are inviting somebody to occupy a chair right or to conduct the proceedings of a session right may i request you to occupy the chair may i request the principal to host uh, the session may i request the chief guest to come on to the days can we have the pleasure of having uh, the so and so uh, uh, amidst amidst us as a chairman as a chief guest right could you possibly do this for me i wonder if you could possibly do this for me so all these are some commonly used expressions for uh, very very formal situations now responding to requests also very important to know how to respond to a request so in informal situations how can you uh, respond to a request when you want to accept the request you can simply say okay sure yes sure of course my pleasure with pleasure sure don't worry sure no problem so all these are possible ways to accept a request in informal situations next uh, formal situations to accept a request my pleasure with pleasure can be used both formally and informally i'd be happy to i'd be delighted to i'd be delighted to host this session i'd be delighted to chair this session i'd be glad right i consider it as a privilege i feel honored to so these the last two are especially very very formal they are only used in formal situations and lastly refusing request how do you refuse requests right you don't accept you don't want to oblige to the request so you can just say i can't sorry i can't i just can't i'm sorry certainly not and the last two are a little more formal i feel sorry to say i'm afraid but i can't so this is uh, about uh, expressing making requests and also earning requests so in today's session we have looked at uh, two important functions that is uh, expressing abilities in abilities and uh, how to express uh, requests and how to respond to requests so this session is only for your information and awareness so what is more important is if you are not good in these functions practicing is very very important we cannot develop uh, uh, using language functions by sessions like these these kind of sessions are only for an awareness knowledge understanding what is more important is practice so hope you will practice and uh, more how to use like these language functions in a better way with this i complete my presentation now i hand over the session to uh, vijay baskar garu for uh, a small talk on how can we present this uh, language functions in the classroom thank you vijay baskar garu your screen is visible now okay sir can i go with yeah yeah you continue your presentation right sir thank you andarki namaskaram scrt var nirvahistunnatvanti 
స్పోకన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ వెబినార్ సెషన్స్ కు మీ అందరికీ మరొకసారి స్వాగతం మై నేమ్ ఇస్ విజయ భాస్కర్ ఐఎమ్ వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ ఏ ప్రైమరీ స్కూల్ హెడ్ మాస్టర్ అట్ గోరగన్న విలేజ్ ఇన్ కర్నూల్ డిస్టిక్ట్ రియలీ థింకింగ్ దట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ మై ఫార్చ్యూన్ టు బి హియర్ టు ప్రెసెంట్ ఎ డెమో ఆన్ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ అబిలిటీస్ అండ్ ఇనబిలిటీస్ ద ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ మై సెషన్ ఈస్ సో ద ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ మై డెమో ఈస్ టు మేక్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ అవేర్ ఆఫ్ ద యూసేజ్ of can and can't in simple present tense to express their ability and inability in our, keeping in mind the objective i included these things in my presentation i'm going to deal with the making you aware of how to motivate the children in order to make them aware of expressing the abilities and abilities and how to introduce the concept to them and secondly i am going to present an activity to reinforce the concept among the children and finally i am going to give some tips to evaluate the learning of our children before starting i would like to give a note to all teachers that is whenever we are going to introduce keywords or expression to the children it is very important to put them in the context when you contextualize the things it will be very easy easy for the children to learn easily manam eppudaina keywords gaani expressions gaani pillalaku introduce chese atuvanti kramallo vaatini contextualize chesi cheppadam dwara vaallu sulabhanga artham chesukodaniki veel avutundi because of this i have selected one context from fourth class unit number 1 in the new english textbooks and the name of the lesson is three butterflies for your convenience i would like to give the story in brief once upon a time there were uh, there lived three butterflies which were best friends and and uh, one day these uh, three butterflies were playing in a garden suddenly it started raining so they became wet they went to a sunflower and after that they went to a lily flower to seeking for help they said they can help some of the friends and they can't help some of the friends so these butterflies what they did that was the story i have taken this context in order to explain them to the uh, explain them the uh, explain them the expression ability and uh, inability for this purpose what we have to do to begin with we have to interact with the children using some informal questions it is always better to interact with the children in their mother tongue because if you start speaking in english with them right from the beginning it will be difficult for them to understand so start your activation in their mother tongue pillalu inta varaku meeru three butterflies katha vinnaru kada ఈ కథలో సన్ ఫ్లవర్ ఏమన్నది నేను కొంతమందికి సహాయం చేయగలను కొంతమందికి సహాయం చేయలేను అన్నది కదా అట్లాగే ఈరోజు ఒక ముఖ్యమైనటువంటి ఆసక్తికరమైనటువంటి అంశాన్ని మీకు చెప్పాలని నేను అనుకుంటున్నాను దానికన్నా ముందు ఒక చిన్న యాక్టివిటీ చేద్దాం నేను కొన్ని యాక్షన్స్ మీకు చెప్తాను మీరు చేయగలిగితే గట్టిగా నేను చేయగలను అని చెప్పండి ఒకవేళ చేయలేకపోతే నేను చేయలేను అని గట్టిగా చెప్పండి అంటూ పిల్లలకు కొన్ని యాక్షన్స్ ఇవ్వండి లైక్ లైక్ గాలి పటాలు ఎగర ఎగరవేయడం చేయగలిగినటువంటి పిల్లలు గట్టిగా చెప్తారు నేను చేయగలను ముగ్గులు వేయడం నేను చేయగలను చేయడం నేను చేయలేను కేకును తయారు చేయడం నేను చేయలేను ఓకే పిల్లలు ఇప్పుడు ఇంత ఇంతవరకు మీరు 
నేను చేయగలను నేను చేయలేను అన్నారు కదా వీటినే మనం ఇప్పుడు ఇంగ్లీష్లో ఏమంటారో ఒకసారి చూసే ప్రయత్నం చేద్దాం అంటూ యూ కెన్ గో టు ద సో ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ద ఎబిలిటీస్ ఐఎమ్ కీపింగ్ దట్ ఇన్ త్రీ డిఫరెంట్ త్రీ సింపుల్ స్టెప్స్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ వైల్ ఇంట్రడ్యూసింగ్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ యు హ్యావ్ టు రైట్ ద ఫ్రేజ్ ఐ కెన్ ఆన్ ద బ్లాక్ బోర్డ్ దిస్ అలౌస్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ టు విజువలైజ్ వాట్ దే ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు లెర్న్ అలౌ ద చిల్డ్రన్ టు సే ఇట్ అగైన్ అండ్ అగైన్ పిల్లలు ఇంతవరకు మీరు కొన్ని పనులకు చేయగలను అన్నారు కొన్ని పనులకు చేయలేను అన్నారు ఇప్పుడు చేయగలిగినటువంటి పనులను ఇంగ్లీష్లో ఎలా ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేస్తారో చూద్దాం దీన్ని మనం ఐ కెన్ అని ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేస్తాము మీరు ఏవైనా పనులు చేయగలిగితే దానిని ఐ కెన్ అని ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేయండి గివ్ దమ్ సమ్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ అండ్ ఆస్ దెమ్ టు రెస్పాండ్ విత్ దిస్ ఫ్రేస్ లైక్ అగైన్ యూ కెన్ ఆస్ దెమ్ ద సేమ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ గాలిపటాలు దగ్గర వేయడం అండ్ దిస్ టైమ్ ఆస్ దిల్డ్రన్ ఆర్ ఎన్క్రీస్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ టు ఆన్సర్ యూ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ లైక్ ఐ కెన్ పరిగెత్తడం ఐ కెన్ దుంకడం ఐ కెన్ లైక్ దట్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రిజిస్టర్ ద ఫ్రేస్ ఐ కెన్ ఇన్ ద మైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ Uh, ensure after the end of the step 1 you have to make the children to register or to say the phrase i can and move to the next one add a base verb to the expression that is i can for this purpose what you have to do is you have to write some action words on the board and these action words are nothing but the doable activities of the children i have given you some examples here like dance run read write draw etc all these are the doable things by the children now encourage the children to say or respond their ability i can adding the base verb for ask them if you uh, can you dance children they will say i can add the base verb so they have to say i can dance like this in the step 2 after finishing the step 2 you have to make the children to say their answers or to express their abilities by adding the base verb to the expression that is i can don't say say to them that i is a subject can is a modal verb dance is a uh, base verb all these are not necessary but ensure that they have to say their expression in a full form like i can dance i can run i can read if your children are able to do this take them to the next level that is adding a infinitive for this purpose you need to prepare a set of questions a set of questions with all doable actions of the children now ask these questions to the children children who can play the cricket i can play the cricket some of the children in the beginning they may say i can play but encourage them to give you answer or to express their ability in full form like i can play cricket pillalu మూవీ సాంగ్స్ ని ఎవరు పాడగలరు ఐ కెన్ సింగ్ ఐ కెన్ సింగ్ మూవీ సాంగ్స్ లైక్ దిస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఎన్కరేజ్ దెమ్ టు సే ఆర్ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ దేర్ ఎబిలిటీ ఇన్ ఫుల్ ఫామ్ ఫాలోయింగ్ దిస్ త్రీ స్టెప్స్ నెంబర్ వన్ ఇంట్రడ్యూసింగ్ దెమ్ ద ఫ్రేజ్ దట్ ఈస్ ఐ కెన్ అండ్ ఇన్ ద సెకండ్ స్టెప్ యాడింగ్ ఎ బేస్ వర్బ్ ఐ కెన్ డాన్స్ ఐ కెన్ రన్ లైక్ దట్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ a verb infinitive we have to introduce the expression and similarly in the similar fashion we have to take up the expression that is expressing inability for follow the same steps first in the first step write i can't the phrase i can't on the blackboard and explain them how to use it give some example and 
the example should contain the activities which are not possible for the children to do so encourage them to say the phrase i can't skip the second one because your children are already know or aware to use i can and base verb so directly go to the next step adding infinitive you have to prepare a set of questions and pose these questions to the children children can you repair a tv encourage them to answer you in full form like i can't repair a tv children can you drive a car no i cannot drive a car like that we have to encourage or we have to uh, make the children aware of the usage of ex these uh, expressions and when you are summing up one more time give some more ex regarding the usage of can regarding the usage of can't and make the children better understand the usage of these expressions second is the activity time and in this activity time you have to reinforce the learnings of the children for this purpose you need some preparation prepare more number of uh, activity cards containing the picture of a action and the name of that uh, action use this activity cards or flash cards to make your children express their abilities or inabilities how to conduct this activity in the classroom you have to prepare a number of flash cards as shown in the slide previous slide and keep them on the table as a pile or you can spread them on the table facing upside down ask one children to come up and pick up three cards at a time pillalu na daggariki randi table meeda unna 20 cards nunchi evaina moodu cards three cards meeru teeskondi now ask them to express their ability basing on the picture and the action written on the flash card i can run i can jump i can't fly i can't drive i can't swim i can run i can read i can't write like this allow the children to say more and more expressions to reinforce your expression coming to the finally the evaluation part in this part you have to evaluate what the children have learned you have to prepare a task table i am giving you a model task table like this where the actions are written on one side and leaving space for writing the names of the children and divide the children into very small groups or it is not possible you can conduct this evaluation individually ask them to complete the task table using can and can't they have to write in the space provided they have to read the activity first and they have to write can or can't in the space provided for them if they can able to do that they have to write can if they it is not possible for them to do that activity in order to express their inability they have to write can't so like this you have to give a task to them and remember one thing spoken english aspects are always uh, based more on speaking less on writing so allow the children less to write and allow the children to speak more after finishing this task individually ask the children to say their abilities and inabilities like pillalu ippudu meer task poorthi cheskunnaru kada meer cheskunnatuvanti task nunchi meer cheyagaliginavi 
చేయలేని వాటిని చెప్పండి దే మే ఆన్సర్ లైక్ దిస్ ఐ కెన్ సింగ్ ఎ సాంగ్ ఐ కాంట్ రీడ్ హిందీ ఐ కెన్ రైట్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఐ కెన్ రైడ్ ఎ బైస్కిల్ ఐ కాంట్ ప్లే కబడ్డీ లైక్ దిస్ దే హ్యావ్ టు ఆన్సర్ యూ అండ్ యూ కెన్ యాడ్ మోర్ ఫ్లేవర్ టు దేర్ ప్రెజెంటేషన్ ఆస్క్ దెమ్ టు ఎనాక్ట్ వాట్ దే ఆర్ సేయింగ్ దట్ మీన్స్ అభినయించి చూపడం వారు చెప్తున్నటువంటి ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ ను అభినయించి చూపమని వారికి చెప్తే వాళ్ళు సులభంగా దీన్ని అర్థం చేసుకుంటారు సో మై డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఈ విధంగా సులభంగా మనం ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్స్ ని క్లాస్ రూమ్ లో పిల్లల చేత చేయించి వారికి అర్థమయ్యేటట్టుగా చెప్పవచ్చు థ్యాంక్స్ ఫర్ యువర్ యాక్టివ్ పార్టిసిపేషన్ అండ్ లిసనింగ్ ఐ విల్ బి బ్యాక్ విత్ యూ with the another important topic tomorrow till then take good care of you bye over to suman sir so yeah thank you vijay baskar garu thanks for the wonderful demo thanks it's a very simple very simple and very doable activity i'm sure the teachers will find it very useful to do it in the class thank i you, now sir. request uh, madhu babu garu to take over and start sharing your screen let us uh, look at uh, another presentation to learn uh, another function how and how it can be presented over to madam thank you so much sir namaste dear teachers i am a madhu babu working as school assistant in english at jetpages kasibugga well in this session we will learn an interesting topic are you ready Askarana, can I start my presentation? Dear teachers, will you please stay for another 10 to 12 minutes so that I can complete my presentation? Dear Sinwas sir and Ismail sir, could you please allow me and show the screen very well so that I can do this successfully? And my dear mentors, would you please watch this and give feedback so i hope you all will do this so i think my dear teachers now you can understand what is my topic all about so if i want my session to be successful what i have done and i have requested all the people to make it successful and in today's session we will learn about making requests so let us check the objectives after this session you will be able to recognize a situation where you need to request something make a request or carry on a polite and respectful conversation right now this is how i plan my session please observe carefully my dear teachers i is my sir to help me a lot in my presentation okay so this is all about right so this is how my presentation goes in the first session you will see how to introduce the expressions like can you could you will you and would you at the same time we have also designed how to design interesting activities and give practice in the third important area is we will see how to use these expressions in our day to day communication and finally we will see how to evaluate all these learning outcomes right now let's look at this one good morning mr parrot will you sing a song for me oh no you will eat me now let's see what the cat is saying don't worry dear i'm so old and i can't eat you will you please sing a song for me okay sure but i'll go there and sing la 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 okay now let's look at this look at this simple conversation so how did the cat begin dear teachers good morning mr parrot will you sing a song for me what did the parrot say andy oh no you will eat me did it accept saying no and now again cat is requesting don't worry dear i'm so old and i can't eat you would you please sing a song for me 
see how uh, the uh, the cat started requesting okay sure but i'll go there and sing like la 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 la, la. this is how we introduce and we use some certain expressions to make our work done like how i asked ismail sir and sridhar sir for helping me a lot thank you so much ismail sir and now let us see what are the various expressions we are using now can you can i could you will you and would you right now here is a small interaction usually how we can begin with children so hi tina do you want to play yes do you have a bag tina no okay then how will you ask please give me a bag so in the same way you can take one more example like uh, if you want to interact with the children you can show something you can bring some toys pillalu do you want this monkey yes mar ela adta amma give me no i won't give you ask politely i'll give you please give me monkey okay in this way you can use some kind of interesting activities to the children right now we will see the real life situations imagine that you want to play with your friends how do you ask look at this what are they doing they are playing now look at this boy see what is he asking can i play with you will you join me so this is the way that boy is requesting to his friends because they are friends so he is doing that informal situation so informal situation unde tappudu man can i gani will you gani man vadagochu alage now we will see to make a request what the boy asks can i play with you will you join me in your team now see would you give me your bat please then we also should learn how to respond to request saying yes or no right then as sir was saying suman sir was saying we have to use certain expressions saying sure come let's play okay come and join sometimes the students won't say yes and they will say no see what will happen no we started the match already sorry i can't give you the bat this is how we use this expression for making requests and giving responses by saying yes or no right so now look at this this is the situation where we have taken from class 4 and the lesson is uh, unit 1 and my family from environmental science from our new textbooks so the situation is father has been transferred to somewhere and what he is doing is he is bringing all the material to their home now let us see how the father is asking help to the child chala jaate chudandi asalu help kavalante man em em cheyal for example first one harsha can you help me now let's listen what harsha is saying sorry i can't help you i'm so busy now now see there is one more boy chintu would you help me please okay sure dad i'm coming so this is how we can use these certain expressions in our classroom situation from our reader right mari inta varaku we have learned uh, interesting things and how to introduce now we will see one interesting activity look at this polite or rude usually ga man work edaina jaragalante what we do is we request chaala request gadithe man work jarutundi now let us do this activity for the children look at that and now listen to this i'll give you two card children na instruction jagratha ga venandi pillalu chadivin tar right ga unda rude ga unda okka cheppandi mummy give me your mobile do you think mummy will give is it polite or rude children what raju oh it's rude now now let's look at another one dad would you give me your laptop please i have to do a project work so what is it it's a polite request so this is how we can play this interesting game with the children 
అండ్ చిల్డ్రన్ విల్ రియలీ లవ్ ఇట్ ఇలాంటి మంచి యాక్టివిటీస్ ఇచ్చేసి వేరియస్ ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్స్ కనుక అడిగితే పిల్లలు చాలా ఎంజాయ్ చేస్తారు అండ్ నవ్ సో యూ కెన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ మన వర్క్ ఏదైనా జరగాలంటే మనం రిక్వెస్ట్ చేస్తూ అడిగితే మన వర్క్ జరుగుతుందో రైట్ చిల్డ్రన్ నవ్ వ్యూ లుక్ అట్ ద ఇవాల్యుయేషన్ పార్ట్ వెల్ ఇవాల్యుయేషన్ లుక్ అట్ దిస్ పిక్చర్ వాట్ డూ ఫైండ్ దర్ సో మ్యాచ్ ద పిక్చర్ విత్ ద కరెక్ట్ ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ ఇన్ ద ఫస్ట్ పిక్చర్ వాట్ డూ ఫైండ్ యూ కెన్ ఫైండ్ రైట్స్ they are making kites and in the second picture what can you find children are playing cricket so now what is the expression can i go out and fly kites mommy so now can you tell children chapukalra indulo a expression saripothundi a saripothunda b a is all about a perfect ravi now we will see so this is one more interesting uh, activity and this is we can use it for evaluation as vijay baskar sir was saying that how can we use make it to very friendly manchi activities tayar chestunte manaki chaala useful ga upayogapadutundi and moreover we have to give lot of opportunities to our students for speaking so concept entante if we give one language function per day or say for example ఒక హండ్రెడ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్స్ కి పర్ ఇయర్ కనుక నేర్చుకుంటే అండ్ ఆర్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఏబుల్ టు డూ ఎ లాట్ ఇన్ దట్ ఇయర్ సో హియర్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఏంటంటే మేక్ రిక్వైర్స్ యూజింగ్ ద క్లూస్ ఆర్ ద పిక్చర్స్ చాలా సింపుల్ అండి పిక్చర్స్ కలెక్ట్ చేద్దాం దానికి తగ్గట్టుగా చిన్న ఫ్లాష్ కార్డ్ తయారు చేసుకోవచ్చు నవ్ యూ కెన్ గివ్ దిస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు గివ్ వన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఆల్సో ఒక చిన్న ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఉంది కుడ్ యూ గివ్ మీ మనీ ప్లీజ్ ఫైన్ సెకండ్ చూద్దాం మళ్ళీ యూజ్ ఉంది గివ్ ఐపాడ్ ఉంది i think we can make two sentences can i use your ipad or if you want to be more polite how will you ask him? could you give your ipad please ila cheskochu so i know i think that the time is uh, running and i'll quickly finish yeah please so, thanks for understanding yes, sure sure i can understand so this is one interesting activity for a conversation so how we can do we will see appu invited guest to his house so appu is collecting so many food materials so now looking at the food materials bunny wanted to eat it so now what would be the conversation appu and bunty ilante oka chinna sandarbham ichi pillalu ganaka conversation raayam ani chepte chaala easy ga untundi of course the fifth class work kuda pillalu chestaru so now let us see how it goes the concept entante ikkada ok sari aa conversations ela unnai dantlo ela ఇది టీచర్ వర్షన్ లో చెప్తే సరిపోతుందండి ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ బండి డాడీ ఐఎమ్ ఫీలింగ్ వెరీ హంగ్రీ కెన్ ఐ ఈట్ దీస్ షుగర్ కేన్స్ నో బంటి టుడే గెస్ట్ ఆర్ కమింగ్ టు అవర్ హోమ్ సో డోంట్ ఆస్క్ మీ డియర్ డాడ్ దెన్ కెన్ ఐ టేక్ దిస్ కోకోనట్స్ సారీ అప్పు దెర్ ఆర్ ఓన్లీ ఎ ఫ్యూ కోకోనట్స్ ఇలా మనం చేస్తే సరిపోతుంది నెక్స్ట్ డాడీ దెర్ ఆర్ సో మెనీ బనానాస్ వుడ్ యూ ప్లీజ్ గివ్ మీ వన్ బనానా ఓకే డియర్ హియర్ యు ఆర్ టేక్ దిస్ బనానా ఈ కాన్వర్జేషన్ లో చూస్తే ఫస్ట్ కెన్ ఐ ఈట్ చూసాము కెన్ ఐ చేక్ తర్వాత సేమ్ సారీ ఆర్ నో దట్ ఈస్ హౌ ఇట్స్ రెస్పాన్స్ టు ద రిక్వెస్ట్ అండ్ ఫైనల్లీ వుడ్ యూ ప్లీజ్ గివ్ మీ అనే సరికి ఫైనల్లీ డాడ్ గివ్ దట్ అండ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ డాడ్ దిస్ ఇస్ హౌ వీ కెన్ గివ్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ అలాగే ఇప్పుడు మై డియర్ టీచర్స్ వాట్ వీఆర్ డూయింగ్ ఇస్ వీ కెన్ ప్రిపేర్ వండర్ఫుల్ రిసోర్సెస్ ఐఎమ్ వెరీ వెరీ థ్యాంక్ఫుల్ టు ఆల్ ద మెంటర్స్ హూ ఆర్ డూయింగ్ ఎ గ్రేట్ జాబ్ ప్రతి లాంగ్వేజ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ కూడా మనం ఇన్ఫార్మల్ సేయింగ్ నో ఫార్మల్ సేయింగ్ ఎస్ అని బిగ్ బుక్స్ ప్రిపేర్ చేసుకోవాలి ఐ షో యూ టుమారో ఆల్సో వండర్ఫుల్ పిక్చర్స్ తో మనం ఎలా చేసుకోవచ్చు ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇన్ఫార్మల్ కెన్ యూ గివ్ మీ యువర్ ఇంగ్లీష్ వర్క్ వర్క్ నో ఐ హ్యావ్ టు కంప్లీట్ మై వర్క్ సో ఇలాంటి కొన్ని ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్స్ తయారు చేసుకుని మనం రెడీ చేసుకుంటే యూ కెన్ డూ వండర్స్ వెల్ సో హియర్ ఇస్ వన్ లాస్ట్ గేమ్ విత్ దిస్ ఐ కంప్లీట్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద రేస్ ఆఫ్ పొలైట్నెస్ now i think all the teachers can ready the chat box so first thing i am sit down it's very rude right so next sentence is please sit down for some more time i'll complete please be seated and now let us see please sit anywhere you like now look at the uh, race and the politeness and finally please sit anywhere you like whenever you are ready so this is how you can do and i, I, I my dear teachers i think that 
uh, you enjoyed this session. Now, do you think, can I come to class tomorrow? So then get ready with your chat box and I'll see who will give a lot of expressions, like come to my class or even you can say, sir, please don't come again also, you can say no issue. So this is how you can say, uh, start the competition and I'll check all your chat box later on. So once again, thank you so much, my dear teachers. And I thank all the APSCRT and especially Department of Digital Education for giving such a great opportunity to interact with you. And thank you so much, dear Suman sir and Bhaskarana for this support. Thanks a lot. So this is how we can do. And let's meet in the next class. Until then, bye. Over to Ismail sir. Thank you very much, Madhugaru. Uh, it's already time is running. Uh, so I request uh, uh, Suman sir to come line and uh, conclude the session at earliest. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madhubhav Garu, for a wonderful and energetic uh, presentation. Uh, dear teachers, hope you found both these uh, uh, demo sessions useful. And if you find them useful, I request you to take these ideas to your classroom and uh, make sure to use, experiment with them and see how uh, they are working in your uh, classrooms. Uh, thank you. I thank both the uh, SRPs for giving, uh, putting in wonderful efforts and uh, trying to give a demo to our teachers so that uh, they find a classroom transaction uh, uh, easy. So I thank you both. Uh, yes, uh, Ismail Garu, can we have the question and answer session now? Sure, sir. So as yes, time is already now running out, so I will uh, yeah. take only two, three questions and we can yes. close the session. Uh, Cheruvu uh, Yajulu, uh, she is uh, he is asking that explaining or telling meanings of words in Telugu in English classes, how it will work out uh, to make to I mean, to teach all these things. What uh, the today's topic is. Okay, uh, madam, yeah, that's a very valid question, which not only you, but many teachers have uh, this feeling, uh, you know, uh, but we, I think we have already answered this question, especially in my, uh, one of my previous sessions, uh, multilingualism as an approach. So we have been, all of us have been constantly telling that mother tongue can be a very important tool if we know how to use it. So it doesn't matter whether we are talking about simple words or phrases or longer phrases or uh, sentences. Uh, even if you are talking about very simple words, uh, especially in the primary classes while introducing, mother tongue can be a very great tool. To First time when you are introducing phrases, words, vocabulary, etc., concept words, uh, mother tongue can help the children instantly understand the concept. For example, there are other ways also where teacher can help students understand vocabulary. For example, by bringing real objects into the class. If not real objects, maybe imitation products or maybe pictures or maybe you can use technology to help children understand words by showing the pictures through online or uh, in the video format or through a projector screen. All these are multiple possibilities. But without too much of effort, while introducing concept words to children, uh, it will be mother tongue can uh, very uh, help uh, uh, children understand uh, very easily. So this is uh, the advantage that we can have by using the mother tongue. Thank this you. doesn't mean whenever a teacher uses a word, the teacher has to use the mother tongue. No. Only when introducing the words for first time, teacher can use. And once children understand the word, later the teacher can always go back to the English uh, equivalent of these uh, words. That is Thank how it is. Thank you very much, Dr. Sajni, answering the question. Another question is, uh, usually uh, in the classroom, uh, students are, we use, may I come in, sir? Can I leave this classroom? But the thing is where in the first case, we use may only generally. And the second case, uh, we use... Uh, uh, can why this? Why can't uh, can in the first case and the may in second case? Baskar is asking. What is the second uh, case, sir? Can I can... leave the class? First one is may I come into the. May I come to the class? Can I come to the class? 
can i leave the class okay can i leave the class yeah uh, so sir uh, that could just be what you have observed but may and can can equally be uh, replaceably be used when i when you are asking for a permission like uh, may i come in is the same as can i come in and uh, even while leaving the class the uh, can i leave the class or may i leave the class it's Thank just you, that may is sounds a little more formal though most right. of us use it to use them replaceably may sounds a little formal sir so otherwise if you look at the base meaning and function both same and can be used replaceably thank you very much sir maybe in your observation in your case it has just been your observation but yes. it's absolutely no problem sir if students yes, use them replaceably we'll go for last question sir yes sir baskar boderi can past form is could but why can is ability could is request sorry sir can you repeat the question baskar boderi is asking uh, yes. can is the past form uh, can past form is could only could yes but why can is a ability and could is request uh, yes sir so during my presentation i have already addressed this thing maybe uh, it was not noticed uh, sir as i said not only can all modal auxiliaries like can will would uh, shall might uh, may all these modal auxiliaries have multiple functions sir. that is the nature of uh, you know english language itself not only modal or auxiliary most of the words have and functions especially modal auxiliaries that is why we need to be aware of these functions sir can past form of can is could only in the context of abilities sir when we use when we are referring to can as a form to express ability only could should be considered as a past form of can but when we are making requests right making requests there is no present or past form they are just question words to ask requests so can and could are equal sir in meaning only thing is could is more polite is considered more polite and formal than can so depending on the situation you can choose to say can i come in or could i come in please that's it thank you very much sir uh, so already today we have taken uh, much time uh, so i request the viewers to understand and uh, uh, excuse yeah, us thank you for the patience and actually this is very interesting and uh, uh, keep on i'm uh, watching at the comments keep on uh, participant i mean viewers are posting that very is please so that's the reason uh, and also i rec- i want to convey one thing to the viewers that though we is telecasting no so that is the varthi program for the students it is telecasting in the doordarshan so this is the program for teacher so i request all the viewers to uh, make use of this uh, program without fail very very important you need to uh, do assessment also and uh, log in in abh so uh, i request all the viewers to watch this program without fail and um, before going, going to conclude the session uh, I, once again i thank uh, today's resource person mr suman bandi garu vijay baskar garu madhu garu all of you and also pokuri sinwas garu i thank one and all for being with us and giving a uh, lot of information uh to our stu- teachers thank you one and all sir with this we conclude our today's session we'll uh, uh, with the new and fresh topic uh, tomorrow on the day 13th expressing opinions with the same soon join tomorrow so till then so we are now signing out thank, thank you sir. thank you all thank of you so much sir thank you so much